Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to give our honor, our praises, our glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakakwadash. Yahweh is the Heavenly Father who the Word only calls God. Yahweh Shai, the only begotten Son who the Word only calls Jesus Christ. I want to say the water or thank you to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai for the Rakakwadash. The Rakakwadash is the Holy Spirit, which is the driving force behind these lessons. I would like to give double honors to the apostles and elders that rule well. Peace, blessing, grace, and safety goes out to all that I came around the world. Preaching and teaching this word and truth and sincerity. Shalom to the hopeful elect. All right. Let's start your call. Uh, Men of South Carolina coming back with another lesson. And this one is going to be on how this flesh, all right, that we are in cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. All right. Because it's a lot of talk going on about how it's no Jacob's trouble and there's no this and there's no that. Uh, there's no chariots. Okay. All right, and, and hey, the scriptures detailing tell you how this flesh that we are in cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven because people are saying, men are saying it's no Jacob's trouble because they think uh, the kingdom of heaven is just gonna just gonna happen. All right, they think it's, we're not gonna go through anything. They still think we're gonna, they're gonna be in this corruptible flesh that they're in. All right, they think that we're just gonna poof pop into the kingdom of heaven and still be walking around. Uh, looking the same, acting the same, but we just in uh, the Israelites in power. No, all right. The kingdom of heaven is not going to come in these uh, bodily flesh that we're in, man, because this flesh is sinful. So I want to grab some uh, scriptures to uh, back that up, that uh, this flesh that we are in cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. So this is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 50. Now I say, brethren, so like now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. All right, so this flesh and blood, all right, that we are in right now, this sinful flesh that we are in, all right, cannot enter into the uh, the holy, all right, kingdom of heaven. All right, the kingdom of heaven is going to be on earth, but it can't happen. We got to get beamed up first. All right, before we come back down, we're going to get into that. All right, because what? We still, uh, hey, this sinful flesh can't go, you know. We got tattoos. We got uh, infirmities, all right. We did things in this flesh, all right, that can't be, uh, you know, that's still on us, man, all right. So let me get in these uh, precepts a lot for that realm. All right, uh, 1 Corinthians 15 and 50 again. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High, neither does corruption inherit in corruption. Verse 51, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, meaning we all shall not die, but we shall all be changed. All right, so the elect, all right, is going to get beamed up into those chariots. All right, not everyone is going to die. They're going to be beamed up from the chariots when those um, thermonucleus, when that thermonuclear fire is about to hit, all right, at that last trunk. All right, the men, all right, that's still here. All right, it's gonna get and and gonna get beamed up the leg, you know the the all the leg, one hundred forty four k and the one third. Okay, it said, "Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all die, but we shall all be changed." All right, verse fifty two. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at that last trump, that's when we're going to be changed. That's when we're going to get beamed up by so called UFOs, which are chariots. That's written about in the scriptures. All right. It says, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. All right. So in a moment, in a twinkling of the eye at that last trump. All right. <clears throat> when a destruction is about to uh, utterly come upon the earth, the elect of the nation of Israel is going to be beamed up into into um, chariots. All right. It says, for the trumpet shall sound. All right, and those trumpets are written about in the book of Revelation. It says, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. So the men that perish, all right, in the in the truth, okay, on this side, their body is going to be risen up out their graves, all right, and they're going to um be also beamed up with the elect that's on the earth, all right. 
It says, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. All right. So the dead are gonna raise raise up out their graves, and they're gonna also be beamed up with the elect that that didn't perish on this side. It said, for this corruptible must put on incorruption. All right. So this uh this flesh that we're in is corruptible, and it must put on incorruption. So we gotta get beamed up into the chariots for us to get uh for the incorruption to get put on. It says, and this mortal must put on immortality. And that is going to happen, all right, when we get beamed up, all right, because this flesh <clears throat> has to be changed, okay? We ain't going to have our uh, damn RIP homeboy tats on our arms still in the kingdom of heaven. No, man, you're going to look totally different. Your flesh is going to be not that corruptible flesh that we're in now, all right? Verse 54, so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, all right, and this mortal shall have put on, on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. All right, so once we get changed, we're not going to die no more. All right, once we get beamed up, we're going to become, all right, celestial, uh, um, celestial beings like the angels are. Okay, no more ter uh, terrestrial. Okay? So this flesh cannot inherit the kingdom uh, of heaven, man. This flesh is not going on them chariots, all right? <clears throat> you, you, this flesh is going to be beamed up, all right, and going to change. And in change, you're going to get a new body, all right? And you can, you're going to come back down in that new body, all right? So let's get some scriptures to back up, back it up, because if you're not, uh, if you're just tuning in this, it, it'll sound like a sci-fi movie. What you mean y'all going to be changed? Your body going to be changed? You're going to get beamed up in the UFO and then you come back down as a new person. What? That's in the Bible? Yes, that's in the scriptures. All right? And the whole for elect believe that. And we want to be changed. All right? Brothers are short as hell. You know, beard might not be big. Might have a gap or something. You know, brothers want that, what? That uh immortal body, man. All right. And that what? That body that doesn't sin. All right. We're going to get into that, too. That's the whole being of it, because these bodies sin that when we get beamed up, those bodies are not going to sin anymore. All right. We're going to get into that, though. Let's get this precept. This Revelation 21 and 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the most high out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. All right. And John and Revelator. All right, he saw the elect that was beamed up come back down. That's that new Jerusalem coming down from the most high out of heaven. All right, Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. Okay. And and that's what John saw, the Israelites, the elect of Israel coming back down out of those chariots, man. That new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. All right. After they was beamed up. Did I want this one? Uh, no, nah, I'm just not going to this one. Salaki. So All right. I'm going to read this again. Revelation 21 and 2. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, the Israelites. All right. Coming down from the most high out of heaven. Coming down from those chariots. Prepared as a bride adored, a bride adorned for her husband. All right. And this is where he saw. All right. It's all ties up into the scriptures. Revelation 15 and 2. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of the most high. All right. So John saw it again. He saw New Jerusalem coming down. And he saw saw it vividly um, even more right here. All right. He saw the elect in those chariots being shielded from that thermonuclear fire. All right. And the fire that was coming out of the chariots. All right. He saw them uh, uh, being delivered. All right. He said, and I saw Revelation 15 and 2. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. That's the elect. That's not going to take the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast. All right. That's who John saw. All right. In the chariots 
uh, uh, being sheltered from the fire. All right. Stand on the seat of glass, having the harps of the most high. All right. And they were standing on that glass in their new bodies, man. All right. Beautiful. Because, uh, like I was saying, those, those, uh, we're going, we're going to have to get those new bodies because the bodies that we are in now are sinful. It's sinful flesh. These chains of darkness. All right, so the Lord is going to put that new covenant in our new bodies that we're not going to sin anymore. All right, Hebrews 10 and 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. And this covenant is going to be made after what days? After the end times, after the destruction comes. All right, that's when that covenant is going to be made. Thus, those days that um, the, um, that the covenant is going to be made after. That All right, uh, Hebrews 10 and 16. This is the covenant that I will make. With them after those days, said the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts and I will in their mind. Slocky, getting a little excited. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. All right. And that's going to be the covenant we're going to have after we are uh, beamed up, man. All right. The law, statutes and the commandments are going to be in our minds, in our hearts. All right. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Because we're going to have those new bodies. And the law, statutes, and commandments are going to be embedded in us. All right? Precept for that, Jeremiah 31 and 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. After those days, what? After the seven, um, after that final trump. Okay? When the destruction is come upon Babylon the Great and all the world, all right, <clears throat> in the various parts of the world, all right. After those days, said Yahweh, I will put my law in their inward parts and write in their hearts, and will be their power, and they shall be my people, all right. So those new covenants, all right. So the new covenant will be with us after we get um, beamed up and come back down, all right. We're going to have the law, statutes, and commandments embedded in us. All right, and we won't go off no more because we're going to be in that new flesh, these new bodies, all right? Those celestial bodies with the law, statutes, and commandments embedded in us, all right? Not in these bodies that we have now. The kingdom ain't just going to come. Uh, Esau just ain't going to give over his power, and we in the, uh, the kingdom still in Babylon the Great, still living. You ain't going to be in the kingdom living in a damn apartment, man, all right? And uh, Esau, uh, you ruling over Esau, you coming out your apartment. No, man. It's going to be totally different, man. We're going to have those new bodies, all right? And, uh, uh, you know, we, we got to have new bodies, man. Look at all the vile things we did in his bodies, all right? Uh, uh, for instance, a woman. A woman might have been a harlot, but she repented. All right, and uh, she might not have been a harlot in the last what ten years, but hey, she got to get a new body, man. All right, <laughs> did I finish this out? Yeah, I did. So I'm ended up with this, you know, to prove that they're celestial and celestial bodies. All right, because these things are in the scriptures, and if you got the Rakakwa dice, you can see. It. All right, it's First Corinthians fifteen and forty. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another. All right, let me bring that back again. 1 Corinthians 15 and 40. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. All right, the celestial ones are the heavenly bodies. The terrestrial ones are the bodies that we are in now. All right, and we are going to get those celestial, celestial bodies when we're beamed up into those chariots, all right? It says, but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another, okay? So we have to get these celestial bodies, all right, <clears throat> in the kingdom of heaven, all right? So I just um, was on my spirit, wanted to bring that out. I don't want to out, I was edifying. I want to give all honor, all praise, all glory unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, double honor to, to the apostles and elders of the great millstone that rule well. Peace, blessed grace, and safety goes out to all the IKM around the world. Shalom to the whole for